Welcome to Crossroads. I'm your host, Joshua Phillip. Today we have with us Mark Jensen. He's CEO of American Resources Corp. Mark, real pleasure having you on. Thanks for having me on, Joshua. And so these are the guys working on American Steel, American Coal, and is here to talk to us about some issues you might have heard about and some you might have heard falsely about. We know you're the big bad wolf when it comes to polluting the environment and coal and stuff, but if you've heard that, maybe you haven't gotten the right story. So Mark, tell us, what, so he, to dig into this, coal, it doesn't go away, right? Steel doesn't go away. The question is whether we're making it in America with very high standards on uh, you know, environmental protections or whether it's come from China or India where they have pretty much no environmental protections. And I know you guys have been doing a lot of work on this. So tell us a bit about this, just get started. Yeah, absolutely. American Resources Corporation is a, a fast growing producer of metallurgical carbon. Uh, basically anything that is made out of steel comes from our products. You know, the big difference that we do here in the United States is we focus on quality. I mean, if you're going to build bridges, tunnels, roads, things that, you know, in your family keeps you safe and keeps your family safe when you put them out there, that's, you want the highest quality, the highest grade of steel to be used. And you don't get that unless you use products out of the United States. By attacking the United States carbon industry and coal industry, you're attacking what actually keeps our society safe. Yeah, and these guys have taken it on the chin with the with the tariffs too. China's putting they're putting tariffs on you guys, right? Yeah, I absolutely. Understand. I mean, but the, the negotiations on the trade bill, and we're and we're supportive of a better trade bill. I mean, we need it. We need fair competition, right? In the short term, I mean, it's definitely affecting our industry. I mean, we're, we've we've had three or four months that we've seen price declines on our quality of pro, on our products for the highest quality of grades that we don't think is going to get complete resolution until we get a trade bill that is fair and adequate. And and I think it'll be coming. Well, and this is an important point too. You mentioned before the, the quality, the difference in quality between American steel, Chinese steel, and other countries. Tell us about the, the difference from how you see it. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes down to strength and grade. I mean, if you're going to build rail lines that you put your passengers on and your products on, you're going to build buildings that you put people in. I mean, you want that, you want the strength and, and quality of steel that doesn't, that's not brittle, that's not going to bend and reshape. I mean, and you don't get that unless you use American made steel or American produced coal. It's the highest quality grade. And we've seen this in China. Remember during the, uh, some of the earthquakes they had, they called them tofu buildings. Buildings that looked like they made of tofu. They were joking, about, I mean, not tongue in cheek, kind of dark humor joking, I should say. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, high speed rail falling apart, killing a lot of people. We can't have that happen here, right? No, I mean, it would just be a disaster. I mean, that's what, and that's the one thing we need to do is we need to spend on infrastructure in this country to make the, the economy more efficient. I mean, get things, get, items to other locations faster and more efficiently, but do it in a safe, secure way. And that's where, when people out there are attacking the coal industry and attacking the steel industry, you're attacking what keeps our society safe, what build our country. I mean, who doesn't, who's gonna put their kid on a, a product that they know is less safe than another one? You're always gonna upgrade to the highest quality, and that's what we have here. And, and that's what we want going overseas too. We export a lot of product, and we wanna make sure when they're building buildings over there, which we all travel to, that we know that they're safe too. And you're not gonna get that without it. Well, and you, you mentioned that, we talked a little bit off camera. You were saying that, of course, yeah, they import a lot of our product too. And what happens when they're not importing the high quality stuff? And then they're dumping the low quality stuff here as well. Mm -hmm. Is this right? Yeah, and then and President Trump's passed some good legislation that once we start spending money in infrastructure, which we need to do, then you're gonna see that it's all coming from United States made steel, which is ultimately what we should be using. It's, I mean, they're, they buy our high quality carbon and ship it overseas so they can build high quality products. Well, the dumping, the anti-dumping legislation that they've been passing is actually to stop this lower quality product that coming, that's coming in and people are trying to save a nickel here and there at the cost of our society, at the cost of our people. Well, and Trump just recently signed an executive order that requires uh, U.S. federal projects to use American-made steel. And I know you guys are kind of front lines of that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a it's what should happen. I mean, why would we not use the highest grade of product in our society? Stuff that you want to last for 20, 30, 40 years. I mean, you don't have to go replace this stuff in five years because we had a catastrophic accident because we used something other than the United States made steel or the highest quality of steel that ultimately caused a, a tra tragedy in our own environment. We don't want that. Well, and let's talk a bit about in the environment now too. Of course, everyone's going against coal. Coal's kind of like you know, the, the, the poster boy of everything wrong with environmental pollution and all this stuff. We talked about the Green New Deal. Like it or not, we can say that it didn't do anything to stop China. China had free reign. It would have, it would have choked out the American energy industry. 
China has free reign, other countries, a lot of other countries have free reign. They're the biggest polluters. And then they're the ones doing a lot of the coal pollution anyways. I mean, how is what you guys doing different from what they're doing in terms of regulation? And also, I guess, how do you guys deal with environmental issues as well? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're a little bit of a different company. I mean, we don't produce thermal coal for utility generation. I mean, there's a reason we don't do it because you're competing head to head against natural gas. Um, it's, and natural gas is today a cheaper, more affordable product. Um, but from an environmental perspective, I mean, the way that we mine coal here in the United States is significantly safer and less pollutive than in other countries and in other, in other areas. I mean, we, we have significant regulations on our business today that ensures that we basically are looking out for the environment under the stewardship of it. Um, but then at the same point, the one thing we're struggling here in the United States is that our coal-fired power plants, which we don't feed, but other mines do, are just so antiquated, they're so old because we haven't upgraded them to the newest technology. China's using higher technology, higher quality technology than we're using, and we actually probably built the technology. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, we're actually punishing ourselves and punishing the environment by attacking the source product. So in other words, the attacks on it have prevented it from becoming more clean, more efficient, and so on. The world should focus on efficiency and productivity, right? Making sure that it's safe, and you're making sure that it's cleaner. And we actually are doing the exact opposite by attacking and putting regulation around things that would actually be better for the environment. And at the end of the day, enable us to operate in a safer, cleaner, cleaner way because we're attacking the source. We're just, we're just throwing a blanket over something that we know nothing about and saying it's bad. Well, in reality, come learn about it. I mean, learn that you can't produce steel without coal. You can't, without the metallurgical coal that we produce, you don't have it. And the world's not going to go away from that anytime soon. There's no replacement for steel. And then at the other, other side of things, I mean, look at the environmental practices that we operate under. They're significantly better. Yet over in the other nations and other societies, they're just blasting it out at any quality and don't care. And then, I mean, it's all one earth. I know you're renovating some of these old coal mines. Tell us about some of the work you're doing with that. Yeah, we are a different company. So when we buy complexes and we buy mining operations, we actually buy them for the metallurgical carbon. So we only focus on the infrastructure side of things because that's where we believe the growth is. Um, we actually buy complexes that have thermal mines and then we shut those down and have developed a plan for land betterment. So actually giving that land and that, that product, that area that used to be a coal mine back to society. I mean, we're building out ideas that would be tire re, re, um, uh, recycling, where you're actually creating usable products out of it, or parks for the community. I mean, actually taking the old thermal coal mines that no longer have a demand for today and shutting them down and repurposing them for better use. So tell us also, I know that there's, um, when we get into the kind of realm of international trade, you of course, we were dealing with the Chinese Communist Party, for example, they talk about resource warfare. They talk about industrial warfare. It, it's, a, it's a very big picture, but it's one of the bigger issues, I think, in the world today. Who controls the means of production? Who controls the natural resources? Who controls the factories? Who controls the innovation? China has the One Belt, One Road initiative. They're going all around the world and they're doing huge infrastructure projects which rely a whole lot on steel. The US, I mean, are we, are we in this game? What's going on? I mean, we started off with a pretty dynamic logistics infrastructure. That was 30, 40 years ago. If you look at it today, we haven't spent any money on our infrastructure. We haven't passed an infrastructure bill yet. I mean, you have to spend money to save money. And the economic loss that we have today by not spending on infrastructure because our two political parties can't get along is crazy. We're actually wasting more money by having traffic jams, by having bridges down, by, I mean, just the, the unsafe side of things. I mean, India is spending, what, $3 trillion, uh, $1.5 trillion next year. China, the One Belt initiative that they passed, I mean, is, is massive infrastructure build. The whole world is growing at a faster pace than we are because we're unwilling to, to make the necessary steps because of the negative rhetoric around it. So tell us about this, this is an interesting concept. You gotta spend money to make money. <laughs> how, does that, how does that work when it comes to your industry? Tell us. Yeah, I mean, so you go out there and you build better road systems, better bridges, better tunnels, better rail networks. You're actually, the economic loss you get year in and year out is compounding. And so by spending the money to build out a better infrastructure network here in the United States using American-made steel that lasts for a long time and you get the longevity of it, you save so much more incremental money every single year. Yet by not spending that money, we have, I mean, go drive around the country today, which I, I do quite a bit. I mean, I'm not a flyer, I'm a driver. And it's, 
when you're driving around, you see traffic jams everywhere because our road systems are antiquated. The bridges and tunnels we have aren't adequate. And so we need to actually spend the money to upgrade the facilities, upgrade our ports so that we can do things and export products more efficiently and get products to the ports more efficiently. We'll save a crazy amount of money and create a massive amount of jobs. Now, I know when it comes to steel, when it comes to American resources, a lot of people say, oh, well, we could just make it all public land. We can all just, you know, make it, make it public parks and these kinds of things. Isn't that better for the environment? Isn't that better for America? They don't sometimes anticipate what that means for the whole world and what it means for American development, is like, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's this idea that, oh, it's always there. I mean, what, what would you tell someone who has this understanding? The, the attacks and the challenges that are created by those attacks on the carbon industry, on the raw materials that actually go to produce those goods, are going to jeopardize the job creation, which keeps people safe, the actual safety that keeps people safe, and the ability for us to flourish. I mean, yeah, we all want parks. I love parks. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm an outdoors guy. Um, and I care more about the environment than probably most people because I actually benefit and utilize it. It's the, the idea that we're going to go away from mining and we're just going to live without it. It's a, it's a fallacy. We're not going to live in wood, how, wood buildings again. We're not going to build skyscrapers that are actually more economically and, and environmentally efficient than building massive amount of houses without steel. We're, we're just attacking the, the lifeline of what our country is, what's made it, what has created the greatness that we all live in today. Great. And I guess just last question, when it comes to the steel industry, when it comes to coal, I guess, what, what would you hope to tell people? What, you know, if you were to leave them with just one, one message, what would that be? Dig into it a little bit. Look into what we actually provide and the benefit that it provides your family. Look into what keeps your family safe and, and where you want your children to be in 20, 30, 40 years from now. I mean, if you don't look at what the raw materials are of a product, like when you go eat food, you go and look what the raw materials are, right? You can read the ingredient list. Do the same thing when you're going into a building. Look at where that steel came from. Look at where the quality of those products came in. When you put your family on, on the rail and you want to take a, a cool ride, which is not overly relevant outside of the major industrial populations, but don't you want that to be the highest grade that you know your children are safe? We don't do that anymore. We just attack things broad based without learning about them and without educating yourself, you're actually making bad decisions. So learn about the quality of the ingredients, learn about what it means to keep your family safe and dig into it a little bit. Really understand the need for it. So yeah, what, what happens if we no longer have American made steel? What happens if really we do shut down these mines and American manufacturing is reliant on, you know, really it's not like we're not gonna use steel. It's not like we're not going to have it. We're just going to import it. It's going to be lower quality with, with lower standards in terms of environmental protections, with lower standards in terms of quality. What does that mean for our military? What does it mean for tanks? What does it mean for ships? What does that mean for our buildings and our railroads? What would you say to that? You would just see a, a slow, steady degrade of the quality of life that we live today. And at the end of the day, the acceptance of failure. I mean, and we set an example here. As a nation, as people from the environmental side of things want to do. We set an example for quality. And by doing so, you're building things one time, not three or four or five times. And that protects the environment more than anything. I mean, think about it. When you tear a building down because it fell down, where does that go? And what do you have to do? You have to then recreate the same products again. Let's focus on setting standards. And that's what we should do as a nation, right? We're a great nation. I would say the best nation. And if we start accepting lower quality products, you're going to see our nation degrade steadily over time, which is going to affect our children and our livelihoods. Let's focus on the quality. So Mark, where can people learn more about your organization? Yeah, you can go to AmericanResourcesCorp.com. Uh, we have a great website. Um, it's uh, got a lot of information on our business. Um, and just learn about metallurgical carbon. Learn about the steel industry. Learn about what it does for them. And just Google it. There's a ton of information out there that people are unwilling to look at today. Great. So real pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Great. And everyone, please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.